We increase in rejoicing. There's nothing more rejoicing than being together in Hakel and learning Torah. So, I want to ask you a question. Is it possible that the fools were actually right? That the fools knew better than all the great intellectuals, all the great white people? Seems like sometimes they are. And let me share with you what I'm talking about. In the beginning of the parasha, where the Torah speaks about the different offerings that we have to bring for the construction of the Mishkan, the Torah says over there, And these are the offerings that you should take from them, Zorv, Kesef, and Nechoshes, gold, silver, and copper, as we spoke the last two days. And then it says, Skins dyed red. Skins of Tachash. Tachash was a specific animal, as Rashi says, that was multicolor, that existed only for that moment. And Atzishitim Acacia Wood. Rashi asks the obvious question. Where did they get Acacia Wood? They're in the desert. There are no trees. They can't, f- tree, they can't break down any trees, cut down trees. Where did they get it from? So says Rashi, an amazing Medrash. Medrash says the following, Rabbi Tanchuma says that Yaakov Avinu, when he went down to Egypt, he saw Baruch HaKodesh, he saw with divine vision, divine inspiration. A day will come when they will come out of Egypt. And then they're going to need to build the Mishkan. They will need this wood, the acacia wood, the Arze Levonen, as they called. So he took with him those cedar trees, planted them in Egypt, and told for the future generations, make sure that you prune and you take care of these trees until you're going to come out. But why did they have to schlep those trees from Egypt? They were doing deals. They were business people. They were dealing with the nomads in the desert. Why couldn't they buy wood from, the, from those uh, wood traders? They bought all the other things, many other things. So Rashi says an interesting point. I'm sorry, so the Rebbe point say, explains it as following. Not Rashi. These trees were the symbol for the ultimate redemption. These were reminders, a concrete reminder that Yaakov Avinu promised a time will come you'll go out of Egypt. It's one thing hearing, but it's something much more powerful when you see it. You see the daily reminder. This is this reminder. And therefore, it was necessary for them to bring it all the way back, trace it back all the way to Yaakov Avinu. But the Torah calls it Atse Shitim. The proper name should have been Arze Halavana, the cedar trees. Or what's the name? Shittim. We don't find anywhere in the Torah this word, this name, this tree. So the matter says a fa- phenomenal background. There were the dedicated group of people who they were pruning, they were looking after those trees. Most of the people were looking at them as a group of fools. People living in fantasy. People living in dreamland. People who don't live in reality. People who cannot accept the reality they're slaves and this is their fate of their life and this is what's going to be. As the old saying, wake up and smell the coffee. You do smell, do you smell redemption? You smell exile. You smell slavery. Be realistic, they claimed. This small group they held on to those quote-unquote foolish belief and hope. Shtus, I'd say shitim. Shitim comes from the word shtus, foolishness. They consider them a group of fools. Now we know who was right. We know who laughed last. 
to honor these fools. The Torah calls the symbol, the reminder of the redemption of these trees, atze shittim, and a lesson for us. Even when it seems like we don't see exile, we see wars, we see conflict, we see destruction, we see all kinds of problems, we have to hold on to the firm belief, the prophecy of the Rebbe, that the Rebbe told us we're living the moments of redemption, we're going to see the redemption any second. Let's hold on. Are we fools? Yes, we are, but believers. And we will, in Mirza Hashem, see the Geula right now.